Sea keeping. Huh? Yes, sea keeping. Some people explain it in almost mystical terms, full of sea serpents. Others explain it through complicated mathematics and terms so convoluted that they must be another language. But what does it all mean? There must be something between the misleading generalizations and the diabolically complex mathematics. Hello everybody, I am Nick the Naval Architect, and this is where our story begins. I had the opportunity to give a presentation to the Pakistan Naval Engineering College. No fancy math, just a simple overview of the science, structure, and process of sea keeping. I've then taken that video lecture and broken it up into several easy to digest YouTube videos. So let's dive into the subject of sea keeping. Part one of our video series introduces sea keeping as a science. What is it? Where can you use it? And why on earth do we care? I welcome you all for today's webinar on the topic of sea keeping your ship and the storm. It is indeed our pleasure and honor that today we have with us a very learned speaker, Mr. Nicholas Bachzak, who is going to give us a very informative talk on the topic of sea keeping. Mr. Nicholas Bachzak is the president of DataWave Marine Solutions and a licensed professional engineer. Some of the examples of his sea keeping projects include development of submersible chemical delivery barge, mooring analysis of oil dock, mooring design of offshore single point mooring buoy, sea keeping analysis of vessels traveling in close proximity. Now, without further ado, I request Mr. Nicholas to enlighten us with the knowledge on the topic of sea keeping. Mr. Nicholas Barkmaczek. So today we're going to provide a high level introduction to sea keeping analysis. The way I look at it, there's one enemy that has never been defeated by any Navy in history. One enemy that currently has the power to destroy every ship at sea. And that's the sea itself. No matter what, there is always the chance of encountering a large storm. And the question becomes, how do we handle that storm? Historically, seamanship has focused on the capability to survive in rough weather. But now we have another tool, the science of sea keeping. With sea keeping, we've gone from merely surviving to thriving in rough weather. So today I'm going to give a brief overview of that science. A lot of the questions that I get for, about sea keeping are first trying to understand what it can do. And basically, sea keeping covers any interaction between the ocean climate and your ship, and most often focusing on the question of how do you improve that interaction. That's the general motivation is people come to sea keeping when they want to improve a situation. So a couple examples of this might be if you have a passenger ferry, you would want to reduce motion sickness on that ferry. Also, that passenger ferry probably has to maintain a fixed schedule. So if the waves start to get rough, we want to ensure that it can maintain that speed in high weather. Cranes in the offshore industry with offshore floating vessels, they quite often need some form of motion control to control the motion of whatever they're lifting with that crane. In cruise ships, another great example of sea keeping is we see active control fins. If you have ever noticed how cruise ships seem to be rock solid, they don't really move on the, when they're out at sea, that's the result of sea keeping. There are very advanced control fins underneath the water that are holding the cruise ship solid. Another example is mooring system designs. Uh, if you think about an offshore floating oil platform, uh, they have very complicated mooring systems and anchors going down to the seabed that hold them in place. The design and tension of that mooring system is also within the field of, of sea keeping. Um, even large docks, I've worked on projects where we had a large, excuse me, a large oil vessel where we were um, docking that at a, a regular dock. And we had to design the mooring system for that vessel, uh, specifically tying up the mooring lines to the dock. Even that simple thing, when scaled up to large scale, can be complicated enough that we need sea keeping. And this is just the tip of what the potential is for sea keeping. 
So there are many more possibilities and it's really just limited by your imagination. Now I say that there are some things that Seakeeping cannot do. And then probably the first thing is we cannot work miracles. We cannot defy physics. Uh, Seakeeping can only reduce ship motions, but sometimes there are cases where the forces and the masses involved are just so large that there's very little we can do to mitigate that. So just because we can identify what the problem is doesn't mean we always have the physical capacity to fix it. The other thing that a lot of people find frustrating about seakeeping is it does not provide absolute numbers. Uh, most of the mathematics and the science in seakeeping is based upon probabilities and statistics. We can't actually give you an absolute yes or no answer. We can only give you a probability of survival. Now because of that, when we come into laws and regulations for survival design, um, typically we don't rely on seakeeping for that type of thing. Or it's very risky to create laws and with punishable offenses based upon uh, probability analysis, because that's a very difficult argument to make. So instead, when we're talking about survival of the vessel and really cases where the ship becomes a safety system to protect the people, in those cases, we typically, we typically still rely on stability analysis, which is a totally separate science. That's a basic overview of how can you use seakeeping. So now let's get into the description of what are we actually doing? What is seakeeping and how does it work? And generally the way I describe this is there are two different halves to the, sea, to the process of seakeeping analysis. First, in step one, we have weather prediction where we are trying to create some form of mathematical model to describe our ocean climate. And the one that we almost always are using is we will divide the sea into a collection of waves, and then each wave will be represented at a different wave frequency. I'll talk more about this in a second, but the main output of our weather prediction is this wave spectra. We're getting a graph that shows the distribution of the waves based upon their wave frequency. And you'll notice the important thing about this graph is that it has a peak. There's one frequent, there are a couple frequencies that are more important than others. And that really matters when we consider it compared to the other side, which is fluid structure interaction. That's our second step, where we are trying to create um, theoretical models that predict how will the ship react to a single repeatable wave. And if you can predict that interaction for a single wave, then you can repeat those mathematics for many different wave frequencies, and you can build up a graph like the one on the right side of your screen, which is what we call it a transfer function. And you can think of this as the transfer function would be an electronic filter for the wave spectra. So we have the wave spectra that act as an input to the transfer function of the ship and out comes the actual motions of our ship. And the other thing that's really important to notice is again, our transfer function has a peak. There's one way, there are a few wave frequencies that are more important than others. So the game of seakeeping science is really about trying to adjust these two graphs to make sure that these two peaks do not line up. And when you do that, you get an output that looks like the new graph on your screen. This is the actual graph showing the motion of the ship related to wave frequency. And you'll notice that it's very, very small. There's not much happening in this graph. And that's the result of making sure these two peaks do not line up. So that's the general goal of seakeeping. Now let's look at what gets into each of these two steps in the process. Engineers should be overpriced, inaccessible, boring. Boy, were they wrong. If you want to have an accessible engineer to work with, click that subscribe button to stay tuned for more videos. And did you know that as a professional engineer, I do more than just videos? Check out the website to find out what I can do to make your project easier.